דוקטור ריבקה וגדמני, סגנית יו"ר המל"ג, היא גם מומחית בתחום של טכנולוגיות למידה, אבל על זה אנחנו נדבר בהמשך, וכרגע אני רק מבקשת להזמין את דוקטור ריבקה וגדמני לברך. בוקר טוב, כבוד השרה לשוויון חברתי, הגברת גילה גמליאל, שעזבה אותנו, פרופסור יפה זילבר שץ, יושבת ראש הוועדה לתכנון ותקצוב במועצה להשכלה גבוהה, מר יוסי קטריבס, משנה למנכ"ל משרד ראש הממשלה, דוקטור יאיר שינדל, מנכ"ל מטה ישראל דיגיטלית, חבריי במל"ג ובוות"ת, קהל נכבד. בעשור האחרון אנו עדים למגמה המתרחבת בעולם של יצירת קורסים מקוונים מסוגים שונים, אקדמיים ואחרים, הפתוחים לכל העולם, תוך הנגשת הידע לציבורים רחבים. התרחבות השימוש בקורסים אקדמיים מקוונים בכלל ומהפכת המוקים, קורסים מקוונים רבי משתתפים בפרט, פותחת אפשרויות רבות בפני האקדמיה ומביאה אותנו לבחון מחדש שאלות יסוד בתחומי הפדגוגיה, הערכת סטודנטים, שאלות לגבי אקרדיטציה והערכת איכות אקדמית ותפקידה של האקדמיה בעידן הדיגיטלי. המל"ג והוות"ת מייחסות חשיבות רבה להרחבת השימוש בקורסים אקדמיים מקוונים בחומש הקרוב, במטרה לשפר את איכות ההוראה, ליצור שיתופי פעולה בין מוסדות בישראל בפיתוח קורסים ובהוראתם, כמו גם לחשוף מספר רב של סטודנטים למרצים איכותיים ומובילים. מטרות נוספות הן הנגשת ההשכלה הגבוהה לכל חלקי האוכלוסייה בישראל וחיזוק מעמדה של האקדמיה הישראלית בעולם. מל"ג ות"ת פועלות בשיתוף עם ישראל דיגיטלית לקידום המיזם הלאומי בתחום הלמידה האקדמית המקוונת בהתקשרות עם חברת אדקס, הן ברובד הבינלאומי בפתיחת האפשרות בפני כלל המוסדות המוכרים להשכלה גבוהה בישראל להעלות קורסי מוק לאתר אדקס העולמית, קורסים אשר יהיו נגישים למיליוני משתמשי אדקס בעולם והן ברובד הלאומי באמצעות הקמת פלטפורמה לאומית עבור מדינת ישראל בקוד פתוח בקידום קורסים מקוונים בעברית, בערבית ובאנגלית. ברצוני להודות לשר החינוך מר נפתלי בנט על הדברים ששמענו ועל תמיכתו המשמעותית במיזם לאומי חשוב זה. אני רוצה לברך אותך, פרופסור יפה זילבר שץ, על יוזמתך הברוכה והשקעתך הרבה בקידום המיזם המשותף עם ישראל דיגיטלית בנושא למידה אקדמית דיגיטלית ומקוונת. ברצוני להדגיש כי זוהי פריצת דרך הפותחת אפשרויות רבות בפני האקדמיה ומקומה בחברת הידע החדשה. תודה רבה לך. אני רוצה להודות לך, מר יוסי קטריבס, וגם לדוקטור יאיר שינדל, מנכ"ל מטה ישראל דיגיטלית, ולשיילי שפיגלמן, על השותפות הברוכה והחשובה בקידום המיזם הלאומי. תודה רבה לגדי פרנק, מנכ"ל מל"ג ות"ת, למיכל נוימן, סמנכ"ל לנושאים אקדמיים, לדוקטור ליאת מעוז, ולכל השותפים בארגון הכנס, ובמיוחד לך, דוקטור ורדה בן שאול, ולכל הצוות שלך. תודה רבה לחברת אדקס העולמית ולנציגיה בכנס זה, וכן לכל המרצים המשתתפים בשני ימי הכנס. אני מאחלת לכולנו כנס פורה והמשך ימים נעימים ומהנים. אמנם כבר אמרו הרבה תודה, אבל אני כבר כתבתי, אז אני בכל זאת אגיד גם. לפני שאנחנו נמשיך עכשיו בסדר היום של ההרצאות, 
אני מבקשת גם אני להודות לכל מי שטרח וסייע בהוצאה אל הפועל של הכנס ביומיים הבאים. לשותפינו למיזם כמובן אנשי מטה ישראל דיגיטלית, לחברים שלי עובדי המל"ג שנרתמו באופן מלא לכל הנושא, קצת בלחץ אבל עשו באמת עבודה וסייעו לנו הרבה. אגפי המינהל והמחשוב, דוברות יחסי ציבור, אגף מחקר ומדיניות, האגף המשפטי וכמובן לעובדות המסורות של האגף להערכת איכות. תודה רבה. I would like to thank the edX representatives for coming and taking part in this important conference. Mr. Zachary Kramer is a regional manager for the Asia, Pacific and Middle East regions, serving several edX members and national-based organizations using open edX. Zach managed a team of partner managers consulting on online courses, MOOCs and best practices. While at edX, he has also served as a partner manager for Harvard and has led several training sessions. I am happy to invite Mr. Zach Kramer to share with us his presentation. Zach, please. Boka Tov. So, uh, good morning and thank you everybody for coming here. I actually want to start by saying thank you especially to uh, the, digital, the National Digital Bureau to the Council for Higher Education, and there's actually a lot more people to thank too. As we could see from the very diverse audience in this room where everybody's come from, this is clearly a great national initiative with a lot of excitement around that. So we'd like to thank everybody here in the State of Israel for partnering with edX, and we are very excited about the possibilities of this. So, What I hope to cover in this presentation is really a quick overview about edX. Obviously, you've already heard a little bit about this, um, but want to start out a little bit by going over the, um, going over really where we are in education. So, so this might be a somewhat familiar image to a lot of people. For a lot of us here, we had some sort of classroom education that was like this. It's actually a lot like I'm talking to you right now, which is somebody in the front of a large lecture hall trying to uh, you know, disseminate whatever wisdom or knowledge that they may have at any given time. And for most of human history, that's been a good idea. I mean, you don't need to go very far in Israel to see ancient auditoriums where people have been doing this since 2,000 plus years ago. So, That made a lot of sense when it was hard to transmit information at different times, when the main source of knowledge was kept in people's heads, and when writing was a very expensive form of communication. Of course, the printing press came in a few hundred years ago, and we've been able to disseminate more information then, but it's still not in the normal way that people might communicate. It's not very interactive. It's a very passive way of learning. And so when we think of education now, we like to think of what the new classroom might look like. It may not be showing up to a large lecture area like this at nine in the morning, or uh, forbid, maybe eight o'clock in the morning, if any of you have ever had those classes, and trying to stay awake, trying to keep pace with whoever the instructor is at those hours, and trying to make sure that you can actually bring in all that information. So, obviously, online education has been strong throughout the world for since really the beginning of the internet. It's even been strong within Israel, especially since then. But really, what we want to do at edX is bring something a little bit bigger. And when edX was founded in 2011, it was really with the idea of how can we build a very large, scalable platform to teach people en masse. Not only to do that, but to be able to do that on a platform that was built upon uh, education research, a very strong pedagogical background for what we are doing. So in those few years, as you would have heard um, from some of the previous presentations and from uh, the message from Anant Agarwal, our founder and CEO before, where this actually has caught on quite a bit. We've been doubling the numbers of learners that we have on our platform every year. And Beyond that, what we are especially proud of at edX is our open source platform too. 
This is the idea that all of the code that, we, um, that our development team creates in Cambridge, Massachusetts actually is available for everybody here. In fact, I know a few people in this room have even set up their own instances of open edX to try this out. And what's exciting about this is that it's not just a movement by one company in one location then. It becomes a global movement where we get contributions from all around the world, both in terms of content, educational content, and in terms of coding contributions. In fact, a lot of our platform was it, or large parts of our platform were developed from around the world, from Tsinghua University in China. Actually, Stanford, who is not a member of edX, is one of the largest contributors to open edX in the world. Berkeley, I could go on for a little while with those. Um, but instead of doing that, what I'd like to do is also invite uh, Shai Lee Spiegelman up to the stage to say how, especially with these, um, with our edX website, edX.org, and with open edX, we're going to be engaging with IsraelX. Be careful. Hi, good morning. Thank you, Zach. With your permission, I'll go to Hebrew for yes. two minutes, <laughs> even though he knows a bit of Hebrew, but uh, <laughs> you'll try to understand. חשבנו, בוקר טוב לכולם, אני מישראל דיגיטלית, מרכזת הפרויקט המדהים הזה. מה שחשבנו לעשות בשתי דקות האלה זה אחרי שקיבלתם את ה-overview המאוד מרשים מכל הדוברים, לרדת קצת לפרקטיקה ולספר לכם מה, מה בעצם השותפות הנהדרת שלנו ושל אדקס. חברנו, כמו שראיתם, לאדקס יש גם פלטפורמה בינלאומית, אדקס.אורג, וגם פלטפורמה אופן סורסית, אופן אדקס. השותפות עם אדקס כוללת את שני המרכיבים האלה, ובעצם היום אנחנו משיקים תיאורטית את שני, שותפות בשני, בשני, בשני האתרים האלה. אנחנו גם נהיינו חברים באדקס.אורג העולמית, מה שיאפשר למוסדות להשכלה גבוהה לעבוד, להעלות קורסים על האתר של אדקס העולמית, ואם תיכנסו לשם החל משבוע הבא גם תוכלו לראות פה את העמוד של ישראל שם, ודרך העמוד של מדינת ישראל וממשלת ישראל והמל"ג תוכלו אחרי כמובן תהליך בחירה, להעלות קורסים לאתר העולמי וליהנות מחשיפה לשבעה מיליון יוזרים בעולם, אבל גם אנחנו מקימים פלטפורמה לאומית על בסיס הפלטפורמה של ה-Open edX, פלטפורמה לאומית בעברית, ערבית ואנגלית, שתושע היום, היום כבר מי שיישאר לסדנה בשעות אחר הצהריים יוכל להתחיל לראות את גרסת הניסיון, גרסת ההתנסות, אבל החל מעוד חודשיים, במהלך חודש מאי, היא תושק באופן רשמי, ונוכל להתחיל לראות קורסים בפועל. מה שאתם רואים פה זה פעם ראשונה, צילום מסך של איך שתראה הגרסה הלא סופית של האתר הישראלי המקומי. רק התחלנו לעבוד עליו, עד מאי זה כבר יהיה, יראה הרבה יותר טוב, אבל בעצם יהיה לנו אתר שלנו, מקומי בישראל, לאומי, לכולם להשתמש, להעלות קורסים, כל הקורסים שפורטו פה, וזו הזדמנות מדהימה לרתום את כל היכולות המדהימות של אדקס לטובת קידום ההשכלה בישראל. תודה. So now that we have a little bit more background on what edX is and really what this relationship means, I want to dive a little bit more into what the mission of edX is. So we are a non-profit platform, which means we're really a mission-driven organization. And for us, that mission is to be able to bring high-quality education to everyone, everywhere. And when we think about that mission, we actually break it down into three main pillars that support that. The first is to expand access to quality education, improving on-campus education, and then finally advancing the field of research for education. So I'm going to hit on each one of these, starting with quality education. So what does it actually mean? I, I promise I won't be reading everything on these slides for you, so don't worry. Uh, really what we pride ourselves in is to have a platform that is, first and foremost, flexible. What is very exciting about edX is that we don't want to be able to tell you exactly how you should create your course. We want to create a platform that encourages people to try out new things, to innovate in the ways that you want to teach people. So that's where we try to make it flexible. If you want to get into coding and add to open edX, we have that more extreme route, or it could go down to just how you're designing your questions, how you're designing your course experience. We also try to make it an active learning experience and a social learning experience. 
That means that we like to build into our platform lots of different components where learners can, of course, we have our basics of being able to answer a multiple choice question and get immediate feedback. But we can even go levels further down with some of the capabilities of this platform to answer a multiple choice question, then see what your peers answered and explanations of what your peers answered, and then be able to adjust your answers maybe based off what you heard your peers say at the same time. And that's just one example. And then there's a lot more around trying to improve learner outcomes. And I'll be talking about that a little bit more later. So when I promise I won't read all the slides, that includes this one. You don't need to read this either. But really, what I wanted to show you is these are just a list of some of the different component types that we have in our platform, really different assessment types that you can have. And there's over 42 on here. Yes, you will see multiple choice on there. You'll see a text input in there. But you'll also see a whole lot of different types of ways that learners can engage with this platform and to test their knowledge in ways that are far more interactive, that use far more pieces of the brain than just trying to choose from a list of pre-existing answers. And this is really what we pride ourselves in as a company, that we can enable you as a platform to create these rich learning experiences. The other thing that's very important for us is that all of these on this list, they're great, but if you can't build them, if you can't do anything with them, then they're effectively useless to you. So we have a tool called Studio, where within our, um, so when you want to create a course, you can go into this tool called Studio, and most of it is going to be in a nice, user-friendly, um, what you see is what you get type of platform, where you can click buttons and then write out your problems. So what we see on the one side of the screen is actually where you would edit a problem, in this case a multiple select problem, and then what the answer would, or what the question would display like for a learner taking this course. And one quick note is that this is probably one of the easiest examples that we have and hopefully gives you an idea of how you can create this. For those of you staying for later today and tomorrow's training, we'll get a lot more in depth about that. But just wanted to note that where this is on the easy end of the spectrum, we also have extreme ends of the spectrum where, for instance, you can have automatic code graders. So this is something that we see a lot on courses on edX.org where they're trying to teach something like computer science. So instead of selecting, again, I, I'm picking on multiple choice a lot here, but instead of selecting from a multiple choice question of what might be the right piece of code to, um, to do some sort of action, instead you can make some sort of component where learners can type in their own code. And that can go run in a safe place where it can be tested to see does this code work and that you can provide automatic instant feedback to a learner to say, is your code work? Is, that, is, is it doing what it's meant to do? And, and something like that is quite revolutionary for a lot of people who may have taken a lot of um, coding courses in the past. So, going over, so we went over a little bit more of part of why we think that this is, or why we're aiming for high quality education. So just want to touch quickly on what is some of the latest innovations from edX that we have with our own partners. And one of them is this concept called a MicroMasters. And uh, what a MicroMasters is, is a really a new type of credential, where if somebody were to take a series of quite rigorous academic courses, that at the end of that series, they could get something called a MicroMasters credential. Now, when somebody gets this, there's actually two paths that they can go down. One is that we hope that this can become an industry-recognized credential to help somebody get a job. So it's really a skills-based, careers-based credential. The other side is to say that, that somebody can use that credential to apply for a master's program, for instance, a professional master's program. And then if they are accepted into that master's program, that this credential turns into credit. And why that's exciting is because um, we actually have one of our first examples of this from 
uh, MIT, where they're creating a supply chain management program. And where I mentioned before, and obviously a lot of you are aware of, where online learning has been around for a long time. But MIT is so confident in the abilities, the rigor, the various types of active learning exercises within these courses that they're willing to put their name behind it to transfer these courses into credit. So that's an extra show of, from one of the top universities in the world, how they are so confident about the way that they are creating courses using this platform. Next, I want to talk about on-campus education. So for edX, this is very fundamental. What we at least hope is a lot of the initial uh, thoughts people connect with edX is around MOOCs, massive open online courses, very large experiences with tens of thousands of learners. But actually from our foundation, we are very focused on on-campus education. So I'm cognizant that I'm using two examples from MIT, but it helps that they uh, founded us, so they are one of our early innovators. So what I want to pull out is from just one class at MIT. So one thing to note is that nine out of 10 undergraduates at MIT now are taking at least one course using the edX platform and blend it with an on-campus experience. That's actually very soon going to be all students there. With one example from their Elements of Structures course, what you can see is that from before they started using edX in the platform, they still had a number of students that scored over 90% in their course. But since the introduction of the edX platform, and they've had to refine it a little bit. A lot of these things don't work perfectly the first time you do it, but they kept at it, they've been refining it, and now over half of students are receiving a score of over 90. Now, one thing to note is that they didn't make this class easier. They had the same professor, they had the same type of exams, the same rigor of exams, but they're still getting these stronger results. The main difference is that instead of the, the students showing up for those 8 a.m. lectures, they're able to watch it at their own time for the lectures. If they don't understand something, they can pause, they can rewind, they can slow down the pace that somebody is speaking. Or if they understand a concept, they can skip it all together and go to the next area. And that's really the type of gains that we get, where then we don't want to replace the on-campus experience, just to be very clear. Instead, the reason why these students got better scores wasn't because they weren't going to lectures, it's because the time that they spent with their professor was hands-on activities, was actually in the lab, was question and answer sessions as opposed to a lecture. And the final, for a lot of you who are educators in the room, I think uh, besides offering free food to students, getting a 95% approval rating or thumbs up to continue with something is very difficult. And they were able to achieve that with this innovation. Lastly, I wanted to talk about advancing the field of education research. So what this chart shows here is really the number of events that we log in the edX platform. So what that actually means is that when people are using edX.org or eventually the Israel X platform, when people are clicking on assignments, when they're answering questions, when they're playing a video, pausing a video, any button you click, it's being tracked. Don't worry for those worried about privacy, we do that in an anonymized way as well, but we're tracking all these events. We have well over a billion of them now. And those go straight towards, um, to the top education researchers in the world who have published dozens, actually it should be around hundreds of papers right now um, about MOOCs, about advancing the field of education. And so when we as a platform look at expanding, look at building new types of assessments, new ways of learning, we try to do it based off of research to make sure that what we're doing is effective in the classroom. And for those of you who maybe don't have degrees in some sort of quantitative analysis or data science, that's all right too. Because within our courses, we have a tool called Insights, which is really an instructor-facing tool where you can visualize a lot of the data in the course. This is talking about how people, the performance of videos, where are people pausing videos, when are they leaving videos, how are people performing on questions, 
If you're creating courses for edX.org, where in the world is your audience from? What are their demographics? And you can actually see that in a really easy and accessible way. So where I've been talking to all of you for the last 10, 15 minutes now, I see some of you might be looking at your smartphone, some of you may be nodding, but I have no idea how much of this you've actually retained. By having something like this on the platform, you could actually see what students have retained, what have they watched, how is their performance at the end, and then eventually looking at student level data, you can even make student level interventions. So for that student who may be in the classroom nodding their head and smiling, but not understanding what you're saying, you could see that in the data and you can go in there and you can try to help them early on. That said, just wanted to leave you all on this final quote, which is to say, we still need more research on what works, but standing still is not an option. We, this is a new venture for Israel X. edX itself is still relatively new in the field of education. But what we hope to do is to continue innovating together and building together. And I have no doubt that with all the minds in this room and around the world, we're really going to make a great impact on education, both around the world and within Israel. So thank you.